Howdy ho, Crochet Arenos, and welcome to Tutorial Time with Dave. I am here today to show you some uh, some basics for ID Scribe version Alpha 1.995. You can see that right up top if you don't know what version you're on. Just take a look up there and uh, you'll see if it's for this version or you've got a newer version or maybe you're you're still you're still on uh, 1.5 I am going to be showing you the uh, what every button does what each drop down does um, uh, all of the different features that are currently in it and if you stick around to the end you will probably see some uh, some teasers for the upcoming version I've been uh, working on it quite a bit, and it, I've got to say it's already much faster and um, a lot of new features, but I digress. So let's get into it. First off, let's take a, let's take a look at this main menu page here. If we click up here, this will bring us back to uh, the website. This will bring you back to the designer's den. Um, right now, this version is an ID Scribe developer, but it will be moved up to the normal regular version by the time this video comes out. So that's what this this does. It just brings you back to the home page. We can see here that we have the save pattern button and the continue pattern button unavailable right now because we haven't started a project yet. Then we have our new pattern button and our load pattern button right now load pattern only supports the loading of idpat files dot idpat in the future in the near future hopefully idscribe will also support the uh, loading and importing of designs uh, that you have made in other applications or um, pngs or jpegs but for now, we're going to go ahead and move into new pattern. Here, you can see we have several different drop downs, a bunch of different options. I'm going to go over each of them with you. First off, we have style. This is the style of crochet that your pattern is intended for. Interlocking or mosaic, this being overlay mosaic, are the only two options at this point. For gauge, we have four stitches by four stitches in one inch, or five stitches by five stitches in one inch. And this is going to be the gauge that's intended for the pattern that you're making. Size, when you set your size, it'll set your stitches, as you can see here, to preset values that I tend to use for my patterns. Doesn't mean you have to use it. You ne don't have to use this whatsoever, and that's the point of the custom size, and you don't have to set it to custom to change it. So let's say if we it's a king right now, if we change it to 51 by 51, say, it'll automatically detect that that's not one of the standard preset size uh, ranges, and so it's going to just fill it in for as custom for you. Your stitches wide and stitches tall can't be an even number, but that's okay. If you put in an even number, it will go ahead and fix that for you. Your first color is going to designate the first and last color so if this is dark then the first and last color of the pattern is going to be dark and same with uh, the same goes for light and we can see here we do have some tool tips to show what these do interior color is going to designate if the interior of the generated pattern is dark or light so um, I usually go with light here if you're looking for a uh, darker base more dark colors then dark might be what you want to go with and the go button it uh it go at it, it makes the generated template so let's go so now here we are we have our pattern let's take a look at the options bar first right up top here first off we have the menu button the menu button just brings you back to the main menu at this point you can see that save pattern and continue no longer disabled so you can go ahead and click it click on save pattern right now and it will save your pattern as the graph size 51 by 51 dot ID pad and continue will just bring you back to um, the pattern editing 
Under File, we have New Pattern, which will open up the Pattern Creation side panel here. If you didn't mean to do that, you don't want to do that, you can just go ahead and click Go, and then press Cancel, and it will get rid of that, and it won't remove your progress. And Load Pattern is going to be the same thing as the Load Pattern on the landing page. For Save Pattern, you can actually type in your name of the pattern and save it and it will save as that name dot ID pat but if you don't have a name entered let's try this then it will just save it as the graph size dot ID pat under view we have instructions which is going to open up the instructions window I'll get to that in a bit you have show grid which will show or hide the grid on your graph and show stitches and hide stitches which will show and hide the stitches on your graph like the uh, the stitched view this kinda looks like it's stitched right I don't know I, I tried to make it look like it was stitched and then you have the units which will change inches to centimeters centimeters to inches and you can see that down below in the bottom right under edit we have symmetry this allows for symmetrical marking on the graph so horizontal symmetry vertical both or none reverse colors does what it sounds like it reverses all the colors on the graph graph size is a coming feature which will allow you to change the size of your graph while you're working on it without losing anything in it well unless you want to cut off you know a whole side of it of course over here we have the color and tool pickers we have our dark color and we have our light color when the dark color is selected left click makes a dark color on the graph and right click makes a light color on the graph the opposite is true if you have your light color selected right click will make a dark color and left click will make the light color and if you have either of those selected and then select it again you will open up your marker menu but now it's the point of this, right? This is the marker indicator. It shows you what color and what tool is selected. If either the dark or light color is selected, then clicking this will open up your marker menu. These three sliders, hue, saturation, and lightness, change the colors on your graph and your marking color. You can change your dark color by having it selected and playing around with the sliders. Same with the light color. Down here we have our different marking options. We have solid and shading. Under the solid option, the only thing that we have is your mark size. These are not available at the moment, but will be coming soon. I haven't coded them in quite yet. It is proving to be quite the task. When it comes to this button, our shading button, this one's fun. I like this one quite a bit. What this allows you to do is only mark vertically or horizontally on the graph so with our dark color selected and you can tell our dark color is selected because well a lot of our things change you also have a selection indicator around the dark color and the outside of the marker indicator is dark but if we have our dark color selected and mark on our graph here, let's change that dark color to something a little bit easier to see. In the light color, let's make that lighter. So now, if we mark with the vertical marking, as you can see, it only lets me mark vertically. This is great for shading, great for um, fine details and larger projects, um, and you can get all kinds of nice effects. Same with the horizontal, but it only lets you mark horizontally. Now this is for interlocking shading specifically. And last but not least, we're going to take a look at what we've got going on in the bottom here. So here's our zoom bar. Pretty simple. You, you zoom with it. You have your undo and redo buttons. So we can go ahead and undo what we've marked. Or redo. And 
this little arrow here, don't mind this, this is this is this is this is on my computer, not the application. Our pink arrows here, these are our view arrows. They're gonna allow us to do something pretty cool. Look at the back side of our project. And it updates in real time. So you can see just what your project is gonna look like on the back side. And you can also mark on the back side. And it will reflect on the front of work. How cool. Let's move on to the instructions window. So if you go to view instructions, you remember this little guy? And click on that, boom. Now we can see, well, the instructions. Over here you see we have the written instructions on the left and the preview graph on the right. In the future, there are going to be some awesome features coming to this, making it worthwhile to work up your pattern from iDescribe and not wanting to export it. But I digress. So we're going to take a look under File and Export. This is going to be a coming feature, and it's coming very soon. It's almost done. I'm just working on the PDF export stuff. So if you click it, you can see that it's coming soon. And under View, Instructions, key this is going to be coming soon too this is going to be for those of you who have not worked up one of my patterns before and are not familiar with this terminology see illosaic will allow you to see the overlay mosaic version of your interlocking graph that is what illosaic is that's what it stands for interlocking mosaic so if we click that we can see that it puts x's in our graph for where you should double crochet as you're working up your overlay mosaic project and it also gives you written instructions right now the written instructions for mosaic are the long form so you don't have the type of marking instructions that my newer mosaic patterns have which includes the use of DS's which is just a double one single one and as you can see here this is why those are so good to have. Double one single one, 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 and it goes for the whole row. This could be condensed to simply probably about five, four, four or five blocks with that in place. Right now, we don't have that, but that will be coming in the future. So let's move on back to our interlocking version. Take a look at graph. This is going to show and hide the grid on your graph just like it does on the um, pattern creation or in the pattern uh, pattern editing window the main this one just like it does on this one and same with show stitches it will show the stitches and hide the stitches on your preview graph Units does the same thing also. And don't forget your view arrows. So say you don't care about the graph, screw it. Boom. Now you have only the instructions. Nothing to take away from your focus. Or if you're only working on the graph, especially if you're working off of a very large graph, you may want this as well. All right, now we're just going to take a quick look at Mosaic. Not a lot is different, but how you can mark definitely is. So we can see here we have a couple of different shading options. These shading options are going to change um, soon in the new version. These two are condensed into one. However, right now, you have your dark hatching, which is going to be a type of shading that I like to use for mosaic. A combination of dark hatching, light hatching, vertical and horizontal shading can give very nice effects. So let's just throw something in here very quickly. One amazing thing about iDescribe, one of the reasons why I wanted to make it, is that it won't let you mark in a place that would 
otherwise harm your ability to make it a work a workable pattern. It will always be correct. And this was just a fun little example of how you can get a, a, a nice little shading effect. And you have almost a gradient effect going on with those shading tools. But the mosaic, the mosaic is um, basically the same. It works essentially the same way. There is a different stitched image, which is very nice. I like that. It looks, I think it looks like mosaic anyways. And in your instructions, you have your instructions. It fills out your X's for you on your preview graph and will give you out written block instructions for you. And that's been an overview of the basics of ID Scribe version alpha 1.995. You can check out my website at dqorthdesigns.com where you can find some of my patterns or subscribe and gain access to ID Scribe. And whereas only some of my patterns are on my website for now, all of my patterns are on Ravelry. And if you aren't already, Come join the Interdimensional Crochet community on Facebook. That's where I post my new patterns and play games with all of you, and it's just generally a pretty good time. You'll be able to find those links in the description below. Stay tuned, uh, and I'll hand you over to Future Dave to show you some, uh, to show you a few teasers of what's to come.